Norilsk is one of the most remote towns on the planet, located deep in the northernmost parts of Siberia, within the Arctic Circle. Accessible only by air, there are no roads to connect it to wider Russia, making it highly closed off from the outside world. The town faces year-round ice and snow, averaging 9 degrees Celsius in summer and dropping as low as a bone-chilling minus 70 degrees in winter. During the seven months of winter here, the sun doesn't even come up at all, meaning it is dark 24 hours of the day. Despite its extreme climate and environmental challenges, Norilsk is home to around 175,000 residents. Most of the population is employed in the mining and metallurgical industries. Despite its industrial facade, Norilsk has a rich cultural heritage that reflects the resilience and identity of its residents. The city has museums, theaters, and cultural events that celebrate its history and traditions. A unique feature of Norilsk is that the city is built on permafrost. Therefore, all the buildings stand on stilts, and the entrances are high up to avoid being blocked by snowdrifts. The city is designed to offer maximum protection from the biting wind. Houses are built in rows to form a kind of anti-wind wall. Plus, they are very close to each other, leaving only narrow slots for walkways in between. The vast majority of Norilsk's citizens reside in six to 12-story apartment buildings, many brightly painted as a brave defense against the weather extremes and grim surroundings. Many things that normally pass people by stand out here in sharp relief. For example, the internet. It does exist, but is so slow and expensive that even uploading a video on Instagram will be a mammoth task. Or going to a store. Cucumbers and tomatoes in Norilsk cost the same as an entire basket of products in central Russia. That's because, as in the case of people, there are only two ways to deliver goods, either by ship along the Yenisei River, which takes forever, or by plane, horrendously expensive. As Norilsk lies within the Arctic Circle, it experiences the midnight sun phenomenon during the summer months. This means that the sun remains visible above the horizon for 24 hours a day. The city of 175,000 has long been recognized by environmentalists and even by the Russian government as one of the most polluted places on Earth because of one business, Norilsk Nickel, the world's biggest producer of palladium and high-grade nickel and a top producer of platinum, cobalt and copper. Built as a resource colony by prisoners in the Soviet Gulag, Norilsk outlasted communism, embraced capitalism, and it now aims to ramp up production to sell the metals needed for electric vehicle batteries and the clean energy economy. Norilsk Nickel is the world's leading producer of the high-purity Class 1 nickel that electric vehicle industry leaders like Tesla CEO Elon Musk are seeking. The company's ambitions coincide with those of Russian President Vladimir Putin for greater development in the far north, which he maintains can be accomplished sustainably. Norilsk is home to a massive mining and metallurgical complex. Workers extract and process vast amounts of nickel, copper, and cobalt, making up more than 2% of Russia's GDP. But the history of the area is bleak. Soviets originally profited from the area's resources through gulag labor. From 1935 to 1956, more than 500,000 prisoners were forced to work in the freezing cold under inhumane conditions. Many died. Now, most people live in Norilsk by choice. They have strong social and familial networks and can make a decent wage. However, the relatively good economy comes with a price. The city is so polluted that residents suffer high rates of cancer, lung disease, blood and skin disorders, and depression. The amount of sulfur dioxide in the air is so high that vegetation in an almost 20-mile radius has died, and residents are forbidden from gathering berries or mushrooms due to high toxicity. But Norilsk Nickel has undermined its own vision for the future by spoiling a priceless environment with implications for the entire planet. The company's pollution has carved a barren landscape of dead and dying trees out of the taiga, or boreal forest, one of the world's largest carbon sinks. Its wastewater has turned glacial rivers red. Its smokestacks belch out the worst sulfur dioxide pollution in the world. Nickel is smelted at the smoke-spewing Nikolivi complex, south of town. According to NASA, 
An estimated 1% of the world's sulfur dioxide emissions are from Norilsk's nickel smelters. And last year, a corroded tank burst and released 6.5 million gallons of diesel fuel into waters that flow to the Kara Sea. It was the largest oil spill in Arctic history. Although Norilsk Nickel maintains that no diesel fuel made it to the Arctic Ocean, the Russian government's fisheries science agency told that its testing showed that the contamination had reached that far. Norilsk is an example of the kind of systematic and long-term devastation that has animated a global movement to make destruction of nature an international crime. The campaign aims to treat ecocide in the same way as genocide or crimes against humanity, offenses prosecutable by the Hague-based International Criminal Court. The ecocide campaign has drawn attention to the failure of national laws to halt severe and widespread or long-term damage that has international consequences. Norilsk is grappling with such damage, both as part of a region that is especially vulnerable to climate change and as a city reliant on an industry that has poisoned its land and water. Norilsk Nickel maintains that it can rehabilitate its environment. It paid a $2 billion fine for last year's diesel spill, the largest environmental penalty in the country's history, and it has pledged to spend more than $5 billion on both pollution control and economic and social revitalization throughout its territory of Krasnoyarsk Krai. The story of Norilsk's pollution is written in the trees 5.9 million acres of dead and dying boreal forest downwind from the Norilsk nickel compound, a scar larger than New Jersey, slashed into the largest forested region on Earth. Satellite readings show that no other human enterprise, no power plant, no oil field, no other smelter complex, generates as much sulfur dioxide pollution as Norilsk nickel. In fact, the only entities on Earth that rival its sulfur emissions are erupting volcanoes, according to a monitoring project led by scientists at NASA and Environment Canada. At 1.9 million tons of sulfur dioxide emissions annually, Norilsk produces as much sulfur pollution as the entire U.S., all concentrated in a city the size of Eugene, Oregon. The region's first people have been unique witnesses to Norilsk Nickel's indelible imprint on the environment, because fish and reindeer meat are still central to their diets. When the pollution proceeds, and proceeds as intensively as it is nowadays, both the fish and the animals start looking for a cleaner environment. As for human health, lung cancer mortality is 1.2 to 2.5 times higher in Norilsk than in other Russian cities, and deaths from cardiovascular disease and infectious diseases also are elevated, according to the latest research. It is difficult to study life expectancy in Norilsk because so many people retire early and move to warmer climates where their health outcomes aren't captured in the city's statistics. Locals tell even scarier stories of pollution. All surrounding forests have died, creating a barren tundra of blackened tree skeletons as far as the eye can see. Adults and children alike regularly complain of breathing problems and respiratory-based illnesses, and the local life expectancy is 10 years shorter than the national average. One former resident even recounted that it was common to be walking outside and suddenly encounter random, polluted clouds that suffocate you as you walk through them. When in this situation, your only choice is to hurriedly move out of it or risk choking to death. I imagine at this point, you're asking the all too reasonable question, why on earth would anyone live here? There are several reasons. The first is that the employment rates are actually comparatively high for rural Russia, as is the pay. Many people move here with their families for a number of years in order to save up money. With huge nickel deposits underground, the mining opportunities are in no danger of drying up and many view the financial benefits of moving to the region as outweighing the downsides. Today, life feels not quite so luxurious in Norilsk. The average monthly salary at Norilsk Nickel is still high, about $1,800, compared to the $700 monthly average across Russia. But the city is literally falling apart as the permafrost becomes increasingly unstable beneath its Soviet-made multi-story buildings. No new housing has been built in the city since 2002, and many abandoned buildings stand vacant. Another point is that although surface-level Norilsk appears like a dystopian ghost town, this is largely because life exists predominantly underground. Because of the extreme temperatures, 
Communal spaces, restaurants, cafes, and malls are all built deep under the ground level and away from the bitter cold. If you've been to Russia before, you'll know that what the nation lacks in warm weather and aesthetic cityscapes, it makes up for in warm hospitality and an unfazed and humorous approach to life. Though the city may appear cruel and inhospitable to outsiders, the people that call this place home are very much the opposite. Despite the horrendously harsh climate, choking pollution, and absence of sunlight from late November until January, many residents are fiercely proud of Norilsk and their own ability to survive in an environment that even the hardiest of Russians living elsewhere would find intolerable.